What's up, fellow quacks? Today I want to talk about art pet peeves and unpopular art opinions that I have. I'm sure many people can relate to these, so let's just dive right in. The first one is when people don't read rules for commission posts or art request posts. I would mainly say this is more of an issue for me for like art request posts. I've had to deal with this a lot in the past where people would just not read them or I would say, hey, I don't draw these types of characters or, you know, I would or like my art doesn't seem like it would cater to a certain type of character and yet people would still ask for it anyway. And back then I was too young to really or too young and just like nice to really turn down requests so I would end up drawing things that I just that were not up my alley and they would always look so bad and I'd feel bad because I'm like well I should have said I don't draw these characters but at the same time I didn't want to be mean and you know lesson learned if you don't feel comfortable drawing something you don't have to draw it and it's important for people to read rules for posts on what you do and don't want to draw because it's not fair to either of you if you draw something that's not like within your skill range or something that you just don't feel comfortable with and it's not fair to the person who gets it if you do do the draw that thing because then it's like you get kind of like a half-assed version of it and yeah okay this is very controversial um this is a uh, maybe a little topical but I feel like a lot of people tend to excuse artists who do bad things or are bad people because their art is good or because they're just like a huge fan of them and I feel like it's kind of like the art version of the halo effect listen I get it like their art is good and you want to separate the art from the artist or you really just don't want your you know holy illusion of this artist being this amazing untouchable person to actually be like a human being that's probably gonna fuck up and is fucked up or is fucked up and it sucks, but sometimes there are a lot of artists that are terrible people or they do bad things that may be forgivable or may not be, depending on whoever you might be talking about. But the thing is, you should not use someone's art as an excuse to kind of excuse their behavior. It's not really a good thing to do. I feel like a lot of people, it's really weird because, you know, a lot of people who have like bad quote unquote art styles or like beginner artists, they tend to get villainized a lot because people hate a lot of people just villainize beginner artists and that's actually another pet peeve. Y'all need to leave beginner artists alone. And I say beginner not young because you can be like in your mid 20s or 30s or how old and be a beginner artist and not everyone is going to have great skill level when they start. Not everyone is going to come, Not no one comes out the womb being a genius at art and I'm not even talking about freaking art prodigies, okay? That's a whole other discussion. I'm talking about just people who, you know, they just want to get started with art and they're not going to be good at it at first. Shocker! Who knew that you had to be bad at something in order to get good at something? But yeah, y'all need to lay off on beginner artists, especially the older ones. Ageism is a huge issue in the art community. We tend to really hype up younger artists who are really skilled and we degrade older artists who are lesser in skill because apparently the older you are, the more skill you're supposed to have, even if you're beginning, which just doesn't make sense to me because, you know, not everyone was an artist or is starts off young. A lot of people might start off later in life, and that's okay. We need to be encouraging. Unfortunately, not a lot of people are encouraging, as you've seen on probably on, like, TikTok or Twitter. I see it on Pinterest, too. Like, people will get so upset over some like beginner artist styles on Pinterest and they're making me downright rude and all that. Especially if the style is a bit out there. I will, I mean, I will admit the lot, some styles I've seen are definitely not for me. They may be a bit unappealing, but that's my opinion and I keep it to myself. And if I were to critique them, I would try to be nice about it. But anyway, so this is something I've heard a lot from people but saying art isn't a real job is probably one of the stupidest, most brain dead things you could ever say about an artist because without artists, we would just not have anything. Art is not just painting and drawing or even making music. Art is literally everything. There's art to everything in this world. There is art to making designs for tissue boxes. There is an art to making designs for curtains. There is an art to designing your house. So if we just were to, so if artists were just to magically disappear, we would just not have a society. We would not have anything because art is literally like the foundation of like a lot of our stuff. Yes, it may not be as like essential in the sense of like a doctor or a lawyer or something, but it's essential in the way of how we consume media and 
you know, a lot of the stuff that we own. So yeah, art is a real job. It's just that I feel like a lot of people tend to look down on the more illustration side of art or maybe even music because it's a, in a way, it's sort of a commodity. It's more of a, it's kind of a luxury in a way, if you think about it, like it's a luxury to be able to pay like a hundred dollars to commission an artist. It really is. It's a luxury to be able to like, you know, or to like commission a song from somebody. So I do get it. You are making a product for somebody at the end of the day, but still, art is a real job, no matter what type of art it is. So we should probably stop, or the people who say that should stop looking down to artists, so. Anyway, this is something I've dealt with, and it's not not to a severe degree, but there's definitely an entitlement that relatives have to wanting your art, or you know, they're kind of like, oh, you know, you you're an artist, you're like the designated artist of the family. Can you draw me this thing? And they always and they either ask it for free, or they do pay you, and sometimes they can be stingy, or sometimes they'll be nice about it. But I mean, for me, it hasn't been anything negative. It's just kind of annoying when they kind of ask out of the blue or they ask for something that's like not what I usually draw which is actually another pet peeve I really don't get why some people see my art and then they ask for like the complete opposite of what my style is like they want realism and it's like if you want someone who does like realism or specializes in that you should go to someone who does that there are plenty of artists online who specialize in like realism and portraits and stuff I don't do that I can draw realistically if I want to but I don't because I don't like that sort of thing. And, and if I were to, I would try to exaggerate it probably to make it more interesting for myself because that's what I like. So if you wanted a stylized thing, I would give it to you. But the problem is I've been asked a lot to draw stuff that is not really what I want to draw. And it's annoying because it's like, okay, fine, I guess I'll do it for the money. But a lot of times I just don't because it's like, it's not worth it for me because it does make me happy. and. You know, sometimes people might be like, oh, so you have to draw some things that you don't like to draw. And, you know, that's true to an extent, but also you can choose what you can and can't or what you don't want to draw as well. Like if you want to specialize in a certain style or niche or whatever, then you can do that. And if sometimes you might have to go out your comfort zone a bit, then you can also do that. But the point is, like, don't come to me asking for like furry art when I clearly am not a furry artist. You know, that's happened to me in the past. For whatever reason, people on DeviantArt would ask me to draw fan art of like Sonic characters. Where in my art style does it indicate that I like Sonic or I've drawn Sonic in the past? I had a very brief Sonic phase. When I say brief, I just meant I watched. I was watching like a couple of videos about it. But where in my art has it made it any clear that I am like an artist that would probably make good fan art of Sonic? None. But people kept asking me for Sonic characters and their Sonic O season furry characters and I just I don't get it so on to the next thing when someone draws your OC but they forget to add a very important detail that's that like you can't not include or else it completely ruins it for example having an OC that has like I don't know a scar a very noticeable scar and like the artist draw it like makes it very faint or something like that or they don't draw it at all or the OC is fat and then the artist draws them skinny or if they're uh, more feminine looking they might give them like a more of a curvy thick look rather than just fat you know stuff like that you know or the worst one where they might whitewash your character if they're darker skin that is the worst one the that hasn't happened to me though but I do recall a story where someone drew my OC Oliver and they apparently were thought he was a girl Despite the, the name and the fact that, you know, I think on, on Demon Art at the time, I still had a profile for him. And I even referred to him with he, him pronouns. So I was like, okay. And yet the person drew him as a chick. And I was really weirded out because I'm like, where did I indicate that he was a chick? And why didn't you ask me if you were confused? So I ended up having this picture of Oliver as like a chick. And it made me feel weird because I'm like, why, why did, why did you do that? But yeah, that's something that's very frustrating. And if you don't feel comfortable drawing a certain body type or whatever, then just don't do it. Don't disappoint people like that. That just, that's rude and it's, ugh. Anyway. Overly aggressive and passive aggressive art tutorials, especially with the thumbnails and the titles are just some of the most, they are probably like a big plague on the art community. And it's, it's mostly egregious on YouTube. 
I've seen on Pinterest, like Twitter, where people will be like, do this, but don't ever, ever, ever do this. If you ever draw like this, you are bad. This is bad. You are breaking the rules. The gods of art are literally going to rise up, and they're going to literally strike you down for doing this thing. Don't ever draw in this style, ever. You are literally going to break the universe if you do this. Like, that's how, that's the vibe I get from some of these people. Like, they are so dramatic, and it's not funny. It, it used to be kind of funny, but now it just comes off as elitist and very scary to beginner artists, especially the younger ones who might see these videos or tutorials and they might feel bad about their art. Like, it def like listen, if you were a person to make tutorials or whatever, you got to kind of be careful with how you go about it. People are, like younger artists, especially are very susceptible and their minds are like sponges. They're gonna soak it in, and it's gonna take for a while to, for all that to come out if it's harmful. Like, there have been definitely some bad habits I picked up as an artist that took a while to like unpack. So yeah, it's pretty easy to like mess up a younger artist, you know, skills and habits with a bad tutorial or a very negatively uh, framed one. And sure, you know, maybe, it's the tutorials themselves may not be that bad, it's just the thumbnails or titles, just to get clicks, but I don't really like that. I feel like it's very cheesy. You can There's better ways to go about it without being so dramatic, but unfortunately, I feel like a lot of people don't seem to go that route, and it can be very annoying. On the contrary, I'm not really the biggest fan of like roasting art videos. I feel like, I know that a lot of them, people submit them, so it's not like they're being roasted without their knowledge, but they still just rub me the wrong way because a lot of it's either it does have critique but it's layered with just some really bad jokes about their art or it's just like rude and it's basically just bullying with the guise of a critique which is another thing y'all need to realize there's like a difference between critique and bullying and i feel like a lot of people seem to teeter between that critique is just being honest and saying hey this could be done better but overall, your piece is fine, or hey, maybe this piece could have worked better if you did this differently. And that's literally it. It's just being very honest and like forward and polite. Let me emphasize, polite. Brutal critiques, in my opinion, aren't very helpful unless the person you're critiquing is very like obtuse or has like a huge ego and needs to be knocked down a peg or something. But you should really not give brutal, brutal critiques if no one's asking for it. I feel like there is definitely some art teachers that seem to have have that vibe, and I'm gonna be honest, y'all need to stop. You're not the Gordon Ramseys of the art world. You're just kind of being an asshole. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Idiot sandwich what? An idiot sandwich, Chef Ramsey. Well, and using under the guise of being of tough love or being, you know, or just being honest. No, you just kind of be an asshole, and it's not really gonna help. Sure, sometimes brutal honesty can be important for people, but you know, in terms of art, there's really no need to. Like, I can understand brutal honesty in like any other situation or scenario, like telling someone to be brutally honest with someone about like, hey, you need to really shape up or you might, I don't know, something like bad might happen. Like, I get that, but with art, eh, nah, I don't really get it. I mean, maybe more professional sense, sure, but still you, Want to at least try to be somewhat cordial about it, but yeah. Oh, and unsolicited critiques are a mixed bag. In some aspects, I kind of appreciate them, but also, you know, if I just post a drawing of a, or a doodle and someone just posts like a whole paragraph saying what could be done better, I do kind of roll my eyes a little bit because I'm like, I didn't ask for this. And you kind of, I mean, I appreciate the sentiments but I didn't ask for this. And here's the thing that arcs me the most. I have, I've gone out my way to ask for critiques before online, like on DeviantArt, and people would straight up just say, oh, your work is fine. There's nothing to worry about. It was all, it's all good. And then they don't ever like give actual critique on it. And that makes me so annoyed. And that's happened to me a lot. This is a big pet peeve that I have with like art class and stuff where I would, during critiques, I would have my art up there and nobody would say anything or they would just say very, very surface level or blanket statements like, oh, I like this or this could be done better, but it's like a very tiny, it's nitpicks. They're not even really helpful. It's just nitpicking. And I'm just like, 
it's just really hard to have a critique about anything. It's not perfect. I know that. And I know I'm not trying to be hard on myself, but like, is it really that hard to come up with anything to say about the piece that could be done better? Like, especially with people who have different styles, you couldn't look at this piece and be like, this is what I would have done differently in suggestions. Like, I've gotten it so much. It's so frustrating. I don't get what the deal is. It's like, it's not helpful. It's not helpful to not critique people during like if you're in art class and you just don't say anything or you say something really bland it's not helpful it's just um it's just blank words basically it doesn't do much to really help but yeah okay this is more um more of a adoptable and close species community related topics for these next two so but it's somewhat adjacent to the art community because it's all it's all under one huge umbrella. But I'm still going to talk about it anyway because it's very prominent. So this is about the first one is about adoptables. I tend to notice that very cluttered designs in the adopt community tend to be the most popular or very like over the top and or very over the top designs that are cluttered and it just kind of seems like they're just putting a bunch of stuff together to make it eye candy. And also anime styles tend to be very popular, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just peeves me because I feel like simpler styled adopts or adoptables that aren't anime style tend to be overlooked because anime is a more appealing style and it's more marketable because you see it like you can definitely tell it. I, I'm not sure it be me, but there is definitely like a sort of generic that generic adoptable style that I see a lot, especially on Toy House. If I had a dollar for every time I saw like a cat anime cat boy with like pink hair or something or wearing like a punk outfit or something along those lines i'd have like a million dollars i'd probably be able to buy all of those adoptables and nothing's wrong with adoptables by the way or having cluttered designs i just it does pee me off that a lot of them just kind of haphazardly put them together do what you want just uh yeah and for the close species part so there are these things called MYOs or make your owns and I do not like the idea of having to pay a ton of money just to make a character. I can understand if I'm making a character with a, a program or some sort of tool or something like that, like a game or a game, but if I have to pay just to draw them myself, like I'm putting in all this effort to draw them and come up with their design and backstory. That's, that doesn't really sit right with me, or paying a lot of money at least, like, I feel like MYO tickets should no, be more, no more than like, I don't know, $15, maybe $20. Like, if you're paying like $50 just to make a character, especially with the rare traits, which by the way, let me just, before, let me finish this first, but that's just, it just bothers me. And here's the thing about a lot of close species um a lot of people have made videos about them and a lot of the points are being parroted here basically a lot of close species ideas are kind of the same ish or at least the really popular ones some of them are unique but the mostly popular ones are pretty much like kimono memes with like a a gimmick like kimono memes but their ears are made of glass and their tails are made of glass or they're made or they have like a weird orb that's like on their butt and they just walk around with like a terrarium in it and it's like that doesn't make sense at all like maybe for a one-off character but a whole species that just has like a terrarium on their back or something is just really weird to me but it's a species i'm sure and a lot of people like it and sure i guess that's their own thing they can do that but it's also annoying because sometimes there are the when you get to like the uncommon and rare traits they're just like, they just add stuff like that's really random. I've seen closed species where they would just have like mermaid tails, like connected to their back or something, or extra tails, or weird ears or something. Or, oh, you have to draw like a pupil in a certain way to be able to have it like this. And I'm like, some people draw pupils differently for a stylistic reason, and telling someone, hey, you can't do that because it's an uncommon trait is kind of stupid like that's just you know that's a bit too nitpicking too uh controlling of a thing you know but yeah i don't hate closed species by the way i do have like maybe like a very small amount and i was concerned making my own but more of an open species which i prefer anyway but I just want to say like nothing wrong with it, but I just feel like a lot of the concepts and the way a lot of people go about it just doesn't sit right with me. Okay, so this is a 
sort of an unpopular opinion. So there was a time on like old art YouTube where a lot of people make videos about how their art teachers didn't like anime or why don't art teachers like anime and the consensus was that anime isn't realistic or drawing anime kind of hinders your style or something like that or whatever. It's basically like oh well, the exaggerated proportions can like make it hard to draw realistically or something like that and like I do understand that. However, if you're in an art class where you can draw in whatever style you want and art teachers still have an issue, that's where I have a problem. And this is something that also irks me because a lot of anime styles, for one thing, can be realistic. I can't really list any on the top of my head, but like, you know, I'm sure there's probably an anime you're thinking of that has a more realistic style. So anime is not always just the stereotypical, like, huge eyes, dot nose, and like triangle mouth thing that you're thinking of. Anime can be more than that. Like my style is very anime inspired but it doesn't necessarily look like that. It used to but it doesn't now. But that's beside the point. I feel like it's really irritating because like art teacher there might be some art teachers that would like sort of put down anime for it's being exaggerated or the style is out there or something like that but then they go and they show off like abstract artists or artists with very exaggerated styles which I've seen in my painting class where the proportions are I don't want to say bad or they're bad in an intentional way kind of like that corporate art style where the characters have like really tiny heads and huge hands and legs like sort of that style is what I'm talking about like I've seen that in paintings and I've been shown that in class which is fine I don't like that personally to an extent I do like exaggerated anatomy but I feel like that certain styles in the way that's done just doesn't appeal to me but it's weird how they'll show that but then they see anime and they just don't like it or they're like oh anime that just weirds me out because how are you gonna diss anime which is really a huge variety of styles you can't pinpoint anime to one style sure the anime has definitely has like a, a sort of a iconic look to it or certain things that could indicate that it's anime but frankly anything can be an anime nowadays like i've seen a lot of anime that doesn't even look like anime really but it's anime so yeah and uh take a drink every time i say anime in this video okay so this is another unpopular opinion and it's kind of related to art school um now i know that We've learned about different artists from like around the world, but I still feel like art history is still very Eurocentric. I get that a lot of the major painters like Leonardo da Vinci, like we already know who they are and it's important to learn about them, but we should also talk about other artists who made historical things or really major things from around the world too. Or at least artists that are just artists in general from around the world. Not just contemporary artists, but like from the past. Really highlight them because there are probably a bunch of, you know, very well-known artists from the past that we just don't talk about that aren't, you know, from Europe or whatever. Or like white. Because you guys want to talk about those same major artists all the time and it's like, bruh, like why can't we talk about these other artists? That'd be nice. It's nice to learn about other cultures in the world and sure, you can learn about them in other like culturally centric art history classes like the history of Latin American art or something like that, but it just sucks that it's not really included in like art world history. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay, this is something that really bothers me and I've gotten a lot from people and I just want to say that while the comment itself isn't it's sure it's done like in a humorous way it's definitely the implication isn't really great and I feel like the next time you were you were to comment that you should try to like think about how what it applies the whole comment when people comment what drugs did you take when you made this or were you high when you made this uh -huh -huh. it's annoying because it implies that the artist, or it implies that you have to be like in some altered state to make weird art, or that art made, or art that's weird is like, it can only be made when you're high or whatever, or people who make weird art are, you know, a little loopy. They're not, okay? There's plenty of morbid artists, artists who make very creepy or weird art that are normal people. Yes, their minds are a bit more morbid, 
than ours, but still, they're just regular people. I feel like to an extent, your art isn't necessarily a reflection of you as a person and your morality. I say to an extent because, you know, depending on what you draw, it might be, like, if you're okay with drawing, like, some really messed up stuff all the time or something like that, that might be a bit of a red flag, or you might draw, you might like to draw a certain type of person, um, in a certain way, a lot of times that might be an indication of something, but generally if you just draw like a certain thing, it's nothing to really make a big deal about. It's just a reflection of your interests or something. You know, like don't look too deep into certain things about an artist's life or their psyche most of the time. Like a lot of it's just, sometimes we just like pretty things or aesthetic things and we like to depict that in our work. But that's aside the point. Saying that can be harmful because, you know, like I said, it could, and it just, the implications aren't very nice, and it's overall just a very overused comment in general, so I just feel like people should stop saying that. Same with saying, like, I can barely draw a straight line, or, oh, I can't barely draw a stick figure. I know it's supposed to be uplifting and, like, kind of meant to, you know, hype up the artist, but really it just comes off as a little bit rude, because it's like, I don't, I didn't ask for you to insult yourself just to make me feel better. Don't do that just compliment me or don't say anything at all you know i don't like when people try to put themselves down or especially when they say oh your old art is better than my current art no the fuck it is not have you if you've seen some of the art i made back in like 2014 it looks terrible if you compare your art to my old art and you say that's better i'm gonna literally slap you in the face because there is no way that my old art like see i can't listen i you can roast yourself but like when you roast other people it's iffy but still Listen, just don't self-deprecate yourself when you're hyping up other artists. Just be nice, okay? Be nice. So, this is about Kajinkas, which are basically like human versions of uh, non-human characters. And let me just say something. Just because someone draws a Kajinka in a certain way, like if they gave them like a certain skin tone or whatever, if it's not, if there is no confirmation of like a actual human, canon human form of that character, then whatever thing or whatever way that character is depicted in fan art as like a human is completely fine. I don't know why a lot of people get so pressed about like, oh, why did you make this character like dark skinned or why do you make them like pale when they're supposed to be like white or black or whatever. Bro, it's just a character. It's not real. And also, if it's not, if there's no canon human appearance, then they can do whatever. This is, uh, this is something I see a lot in the Animal Crossing community. I remember people would get such a fuss over, like, why did you make so-and-so like look like this when they should look like this? Or why did you make give them this body type or this? They're animals. You can draw however you want in a human form. It doesn't matter. Just because someone doesn't like make them more diverse looking or whatever is not a bad thing. Sure, I feel like a lot of people might prefer the more diverse character designs over opposed to like the more generic anime ones, but still, that's not really an excuse to hate or harass people for it. This is something I see a lot on Twitter especially. Oh my gosh, within the Cookie Run fandom, like people were going nuts over how like, oh you're wait, what's in the cookies? Even though because they're brown or whatever, because they're cookies, not because, you know, that's her skin tone or whatever. People are getting all in the huff over that. And I'm just like, I don't get it. They're cookies. You can draw if you draw the human, it's not really gonna it's not a big deal, but whatever. So this sort of ties into like a past uh pet peeve I mentioned. And critiquing someone's art but not accounting for their art style is something that a lot of people need to realize that you can't apply a so you can't apply like a critique of someone's style who's very like let's say very cartoonish like western cartoon like old like early 2000s cartoon vibes to something more realistic like a realistic comic book style because they're completely different things and it's not fair to apply like, oh, make sure you add more lines to this or that. And then, oh, make sure you make the, this more angular. That doesn't make sense because their styles are completely different. If you're going to give a critique, you have to kind of cater to the style. And if the style wants to be more realistic, then you have to say that or you have to indicate that. But or if you want it to be more or less realistic, then you have to also indicate that as well. You can't 
apply realism to something that's not realistic and vice versa. Unless you're trying, unless that's kind of the point or whatever. Basically, just you have to be considerate of people's styles. Not everything's gonna look the way that you expect it to, or not everything's gonna. Not everything can be applied to every style. You have to kind of go about it like by a case by case basis. And I feel like a lot of people don't realize that. So we're getting towards the end, and I wanted to say it's very frustrating. This is probably one of the biggest pet peeves I have currently. That. It is so hard to find a decent site for artists because it feels like every art site or site with a lot of artists it just goes to shit. Twitter has become X and I feel like that's the stupidest thing ever because there's a lot of jokes about like X, you know, like X videos or X pictures, you know, it's implying a certain thing. So good job, Elon. Um, but then there's the fact that like DeviantArt went to crap because of its AI shit and also because Eclipse is not good. Listen, it, lo it looks so much better in the past. It looked so much better. Why fix something that's not broken? But now it's it's real win. I don't even want to go back there. I just keep it up for archive purposes because I don't want to lose all that. I mean, I still have the old art, but it's nice to just have it up there with context, you know? But that's beside the point. DeviantArt's kind of crappy. Tumblr is good. But it's very fandom focused, so if you want to show off your original characters, you are probably not going to get very many likes unless you cater to a certain niche or you are already like a popular artist. And also original art also tends to get overlooked as well unless, like I said, you're a popular artist or something. So yeah, if you're a fandom person, perfect. If you're not a fandom person, not great. Okay, I'm going to end on this note. So I am currently an art. I'm not I guess you could say art school. I'm just going to college for art. There's a difference like I'm not going to an art college specifically I was supposed to but I couldn't afford it But there's definitely an elitist feeling about art school or how like you should go or whatever Listen art school is like I literally went to a pre-college at an actual art school and being at art, a college right now It's the same thing really like it's you might as well just go to regular college that just has a really good art program rather than going to an art school like your art is not necessarily going to be any your art is not going to like become godlike because you went to like cal arts i wanted to go to rhode island school of design i think at one point but like those places you know your art's not gonna come astronomically better because you went there or because like a famous artist went to that school you're not and also like art schools are notorious for being very expensive so it might be a class thing as well like we get it, you're rich. Not everyone's rich enough to go to a fancy schmancy art school. That's, you know, beside the point, though. Um, yeah, you're better off just going to a regular college with a good art program, which is what I'm doing. It's more affordable. And I do get that people are like, oh, connections, the connections. You make good connections, you go to the good art schools, and you can make good connections at a regular college. It's just, uh, it sucks because, you know, my college just definitely is not an art-focused college. They very much are very hyper-focused on the science side of things, and they very much like their athletes, like my high school, but that's okay, you know, it's whatever. You know, scientists are cool, but yeah, like, you're not better than anyone else for going to art school, and you're not worse for not going to art school or going to school in general. If you want to make your art career just by simply not going to college at all, that's cool as well. College definitely has helped me a lot. Like it's helped me improve, and I feel like if I didn't go, I would probably be at a slower pace than I am now. So I do appreciate college for helping me improve and opening my eyes to a lot of things. I feel like it's very beneficial, and I feel like if you have the resources, you should go. But if you don't, then I don't think you should be pressured to go. I don't think it's necessary, but I feel like it can be very, very helpful to a lot of people if you can, uh, if you can afford to. I know a lot of people, not a lot of people have that privilege, so yeah. So that's the end of the video. I have worn out my voice once again. I did not expect this video to be long. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to edit down. So anyway, see you quacks later.